Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. For Mother's Day, I had a similar episode to this one. It was very well received. I had an interview with, you guessed it, my mom. So today I wanted to welcome our special guest. He is the 1986 self-proclaimed free throw champion in central Alberta. He has consumed 123 chicken wings in one go. And he's a member of the Century Club. He had 100 shots of beer in 100 minutes and he didn't go pee the whole time. So those are his three most impressive feats. I'll leave out his career feats because those are something he probably doesn't want me to talk about. So without further ado, Bob Paley, my dad. That's, uh, that's one of the greatest introductions I've had in the history of my life. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank I appreciate you for being it. here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks yeah, for having so me. So you're probably like my second biggest fan next to my mom. I'd so say. mom's ahead of me, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I'm not, we're not tied. Is no. that a politically correct thing to say? I think with moms it's okay to say that. Yeah, You're I don't probably think probably so. right. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Fair enough. It's true. She loves you more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would say that, but... Uh, no, she does. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, so as you know, this show is all about awakening our potential, and I sure. believe everyone has a potential that they can tap into. So do you want to kind of tell people what you feel like they could do to awaken their potential and kind of live... A life that they're supposed to man there's so many things um, how long is your podcast normally <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I, I do I think you know of where people are in their lives and and I think it you know the neat thing is is that this isn't just for a 20 year old or for an 18 year old this could be for somebody who's 50 or 60 years old and they've just been I've met so many people and we've got a gentleman that's working with us now who's 57 years old and, and starting up with something brand new and I, I love that and I think that that's something that's super important for everybody out there and that's that it's never too late um, and it's never too early to, to really look at what it is you are passionate about. Um, I don't necessarily think you need to follow your passion but I do believe that your passion follows whatever you, you, you have for something. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. um, I think the number one thing is, is you know, trust in the things that you love. Um, trust in yourself. Believe enough in yourself uh, and the things that you're interested in. Um, and, you know, don't, don't settle necessarily for the easiest thing, the path of least resistance. I think that that's something that a lot of people, unfortunately, might do the easy way through something. And... And then, you know, after a handful of years, you kind of lose interest in it. So um, I think that's something. And I think uh, two other things, um, you have a voice. Uh, you do, uh, I do, uh, everybody does. And, you know, to, to use that voice, you know, and, and be confident in yourself and what it is that you're looking to do and, and go get it because nobody's going to bring it to you. So go get it and use that voice. Use that voice to connect to people who... Uh, you know, who maybe can help you get to where you want to get to. Ask questions. Um, yeah, all the corny things that you're going to read in all of these books kind of is where what I would say. You know, and it, they do sound corny, but they're corny because they're real and they're true. And uh, so I think that, um, you know, like I say, listening to that voice inside your head that's telling you to go into a certain direction, do that. The last thing I'll say is to be open-minded to a path. You know, this uh, we, you and I talked off camera about this is going to be the easiest interview for you. You're going to ask me one question. I'm just going to keep talking. Um, but basically is um, be open-minded to wherever your road takes you. Like I was going to be a phys ed teacher. I'm not a phys ed teacher. Um, and I, I have been at the same position for 25 years. So I'm, I'm abnormal in that sense. So I think a lot of people think to get out of high school, man, you got to have it nailed. You know, you got to go to university, you got to know what you're going to do, and, and that's it. Well, I didn't it. Uh, it doesn't have to be it. Um, but just as you're going through life, what do you love, what don't you love, and, you know, and be confident enough to, to go and, and, and take a bit of a risk to do some things you might not want to do. Yeah, so that's all, we, all the time we have for today. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, you kind of mentioned that the books have like kind of cliches or kind of stuff that's commonly said. Do you have any favorite books that you would recommend to people to read? I know there's probably a million different oh, ways you yeah. can answer that. Well, there's so many. So the first one that would pop into my mind is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Yeah, that's um, the first book that got me really into reading. It helped me find my why that I've since kind of, it used to be Maximize the Moment, then it was to grow and help others grow and now it's evolved into awaken your potential. So it's amazing how it can just kind of, you can refine it more and more. 
Yeah, and that's what Simon talks about in his book is that you just continually boil down what that why statement is and it was powerful for us here at Kananaskis during the flood um, to come up with sort of something that defines us and that being make the time. And, and um, I've made an episode about that as well, which was inspired by, by this place here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think so that's, that's one book. There's another book called uh, Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea which is about the Zappos story, um, which is all about business and business culture. Um, there's the Pixar uh, book that I really liked uh, that I think you have read or just are in the yeah. middle of it. Yeah, I'm in the middle reading. of it, yeah. Um, there is uh, Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of books that uh, I think are fantastic. Um, Why Should I Choose You? Um, I'm forgetting the author's name. There's two of them. Ken Blanchard and... Nope. Uh, Ken Blanchard did um, Raving Fans. Okay. Yeah, he wasn't one of these two. I forget I forget. I think there's names. a Ken. I f- it might be Ken. And Ken, it's thank you. It's probably right here on the Ken, screen right now. Ken, thank you so much for writing the book. We loved it. Uh, <laughs> it is. It's awesome. And it kind of takes Start With Why, and it's like the next phase of uh, what to do after you, def- you, def- you figure out your why statement. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of the books that he read, he read during a pretty unique time in our family. It's the, the golf course just behind us here actually flooded in 2013. Do you want to just walk us through kind of what that experience was like to having like a, a job like year round to maybe not having a job again? Like what was that like for you, just the whole experience with the, the four year hiatus? Is this, flood? is this going to be the first four hour episode of AYP? <laughs> hey, I... <laughs> Get comfortable, everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so, done asking questions now. Yeah. He, I'll let him take it in a, from here. In a nutshell, it was what a lot of people would think. Can I swear on this? Yeah. A lot of people would think it's like probably the shittiest year of your life, and it was really one of the most empowering years of our life. Um, my father passed away. Your grandfather passed away uh, a week, eight days before the flood. Last and week's episode was actually about Dave's day to kind of talk about the important man that he was and we're a both the product of him, so yeah. it's a very special yeah. day for us, June 12th exactly. every year. So anyways, it was a really good, um, uh, really interesting time. Um, it gave us an opportunity to sort of see how beloved this place was and how important this place was to so many people um, that, that came out. They just wanted to help. They wanted to do something and all felt helpless because, you know, this golf course got ripped apart by mother nature and and she is the most powerful thing in the world and and um and yeah we didn't know what our future was going to be but man we believe so much in in Kananaskis and Kananaskis country that we just couldn't see ourselves leaving they were gonna have to drag us out of here and thankfully so far hopefully nobody does uh nobody's dragged us out of here yet but um we love it here uh It's a special, special place where people come to decompress and reconnect and just enjoy being around family and friends and business associates. And uh, and we've got such a wonderful cast of characters here, our K-team, and and just to be around them and know that that this was going to be a great place, like a kind of like a little university of life, you know, that uh, you and your brother were both a part of. And it's a really cool opportunity for somebody to come out here and, and... learn to be around and live with others. And, and uh, so there's just so many reasons that aren't just about golf, that when this place came back, we got to start to do again. And, and uh, like, honestly, I could talk for hours and hours on end about <laughs> this, because I'm so passionate about this place and um, and what it's all about. And, and uh, you know, the feeling that, that our guests have, the feeling that our team has and the connection that we have with all that. And, and not having that for five years during the flood was, uh, it was hard. It was really, really hard. But, but what was pushing us was um, knowing we're going to get to get it again. And, and I've said this to you a bunch of times. There isn't a day that goes by, you know, where I say to myself, I, I will not ever take this place for granted uh, ever again. And I did. And we've been here for 25 years, and since the flood, um, not a day goes by where we are just thanking, um, thanking our our. our our good luck, our good fortune, whatever God you might believe in. Um, my father uh, talked to somebody up there and, and thanked them for allowing us to be here. So, Yeah. Well, I think a huge component of this place, I mean, you could put this on a postcard. I say people always come out initially for the mountains, but they stay for the people. And culture is right. a huge thing out here. Do you just want to touch on kind of the importance of like the authenticity and the culture that you've created with Make the Time? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everybody out there has been a part of something where, you know, you meet somebody or you go into a business and who they say they are isn't necessarily reflected in, you know, how they act or what they believe or, or any of those kinds of things. And it's that authenticity that I think, you know, is such an important deal. So we're very clear on kind of what we're all about. You know, with uh, Simon Sinek and Start With Why and, and, and Tony Shea and Zappos had like 10 things that were kind of their core values and we have some of the same things, including things like do the right thing, you know, not be scared to think outside the box, uh, no such thing as not my job, uh, all those different kinds of things. And um, and so, yeah, it's, it's um, you know, for us, it's a super, super special thing and and uh, yeah. That's amazing. Now through all your experience with culture and with just the journey to get here, I know it wasn't a linear experience, but what do you think the most important takeaway and lesson from all of it is? I know it's probably a pretty loaded question, but if you had to boil it down to one thing or a series of things, what would that be? From a culture standpoint? Just from any standpoint, like what's the most, the biggest takeaway that you could share with our audience about your experience and the ups and downs of it? You didn't know you were gonna be a golf pro and then right you became a golf pro and then the flood happened like what's your biggest takeaway just from the entire experience if you had to sum it up in one sentence or one uh, I think short it's, book here <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that it's you know that no matter what um if you enjoy what you're doing and you're passionate about what you're doing um and i think if you're good to people you know and if you are you know again from an authenticity standpoint if you if you're if you're doing and acting out on the things that you say that you're going to you know you are we always talk your mom and i talked to you and your brother about living clean right and 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 i think what that was was the form of authenticity so be who you say that you're going to be um and if you do that um you know the world is you know is a lot easier and it's it's a lot more enjoyable uh, you don't have to you know think what lie are you in or what am i thinking about this or who's this person, you know, like, and, and, you know, trying to think of what it is you're, you're just, you have the ability to be who you are. And, and, uh, so I think that that's a, that's a big thing. And I, I honestly just think, um, like just, it sounds so crazy, but just be good to people, you know, like I think of anything that I've, if I've ever passed along, um, anything to anybody, you know, that we're here, what do you call it? Mentoring or whatever you want to call it, but people that we have an opportunity to, to work with and that's just to you know just to be good to people and and to engage with 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 people because i think it's becoming a, a bit of a lost art and if you go somewhere or you're around somebody who looks you in the in the eye and shakes your hand and um you stand out and uh and i think a lot of really cool things happen now i'm not saying you're gonna every door is gonna be open to you because you know you look somebody in the eye and shake their hand but i think what i'm saying is is that um, you know, if you are a really good and true person to somebody, you're hardworking and you don't mind doing whatever it takes to, to do, I mean, the world is your oyster. Like it is, you're going to stand out above 99.9% .9 of the people that are out there. Yeah. And I've, I've never really agreed with the, uh, the adage that nice people finish last. I think that's kind of a false narrative. I think if you're nice and you just put other people before yourself, but you also put yourself in a position where you're able to interact with people in a positive, uplifting way. There's just right. nothing that nothing bad can come from it. Nothing. No, exactly. And you learn so much about yourself, right? Yeah. Because definitely. it feels weird to start like where you're introducing yourself to somebody, you know, that comes into the shop or there's always well, that, that. I was like, always the young guy around all the team that was like 20, 25 years old here. And I was like five. And Scott Golding, one of our good friends, one of the <laughs> biggest cape pens said I would used to just come up with my eyes looking like this and I'm like hi I'm Sam hi I'm Sam like you from a young age you've yeah. taught me that just the importance of being a good soul a good person I'm right. very grateful for that but I think it's as you said kind of a lost art and stuff like that and yeah I mean I think quite honestly I think most people are, are unbelievably good human beings and you know sometimes they're put in situations that cause them to maybe not you know lose their way a little bit and there are some people out there yeah. there are some people that are out there that aren't you know but i think the strong majority are good people and and uh and it's believing enough in that and looking for that in people and if somebody seems a little crabby it's 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 not being judgmental and going ah, i don't want to talk to this guy it's 
trying to find out like what's up with this person and and you know i wonder what's happened to them and maybe they're having because you have no idea what's going on in their world and you have no idea how much and i've seen it happen so many times here where you break through that crust and there's this warm gooey you know heart that's just you know thank you for taking the time to, i'm sorry i was being so this happened you know i lost my mother last week or you know something traumatic's happened to them and and you know i think it's just such an easy thing these days i'm going to hop up my soapbox here for a second but um your mom asked me a while back if i could have a superhero power what would i want it to be and i think she thought i would say like flying or being invisible or invisible. whatever yeah. yeah for me it, it would be if i could wipe out judgment from the world where people have no idea what somebody's going through on social media you see it all the time or one religion versus another religion and just if we could all just sort of see the world you know from the same goggles you know and, or just you don't even need to see it from the same goggles but just understand like i'm gonna see something different than you are and that's okay yeah you don't have to see it my there way there can be multiple versions of truth and right i think that's that's very pow powerful too to just that there's not You've always told me that there's not one truth, there's multiple truths, and you never right. know what someone is going through. Now, another thing that you kind of pointed out, sometimes you have certain individuals that come into your life that they just seem to have what you call that it factor. Yeah. And what do you, how can you define that it factor and how can you kind of learn to develop that? You, you don't have to define it. You all know what we're talking about. You bump into somebody and you just want to be around this person. Like this person, is engaging they've got this energy and they just got stuff flying everywhere you're just trying to catch as much of this person's energy as you possibly yeah, can yeah i'm sure and when he said that someone came to mind for you for exactly who that yeah, is yeah that's exactly right exactly right and and i think that you know it's it's um it's just that person that pays attention to little things you know to again introducing yourself to somebody to caring about hey how are you doing or you know somebody that's you know, um, working, busting their butts, doing something in a, in a thankless job and walking up and just saying like, thank you. Thanks for doing what you're doing because not many people would do what you're doing. And, and you know, just going above and beyond and recognizing and being empathetic to, you know, to different people that are out there, um, being a voice of reason to somebody, um, being a listener and just sitting there. And you know, there's, there's, a, there's a wave of, of information going out right now where people are talking a lot more about listening and the most powerful answer you can have to something is by saying nothing rather than just filling the air with you know words that don't really mean much of anything yeah, and embracing just the silence of conversation exactly and, and being comfortable with it yeah yeah and i think that that's something that's a bit of a lost art is that active listening and and uh empathic know, listening and for sure yeah, yeah exactly yeah exactly. so who so. who would be some people in your life that you have kind of been influenced by that you maybe consider have that it factor or at least have components of it. Do you have some individuals who come to mind? Yeah, for sure. I think of uh, uh, my dad uh, was one person that just, you know, would be somebody that would be busting a table, like at a restaurant we'd be visiting and he'd go over and he'd be just like, like just want to let you know, like I think you're doing an amazing job. And yeah. so many things I learned from him, you know, by watching that and, um, you know, so I think that that he would be one person. I think another guy is uh, a coach, so Hugh McPherson. Uh, yeah, one of my, he was a phys ed teacher. It's and on an October teacher. coach. We got a big match every year. <laughs> yeah. We got stomped like six and five last time, but it's on coach. He uh, he's a guy that just you know, you just know he cares, uh, and he's always reaching out. He's um, he's just well connected. Um, he never forgets his students and family and just makes you feel like you're a part of something and um, they just it always makes you feel heard I find yeah every time I talk to coach he just feels like he genuinely has an interest in what you're up to and what you're doing and right I think that's a powerful attribute to having that it factor is just genuinely caring about other people for sure and that's I think genuine right genuine Authentic yeah. or genuine and and you just you can tell when it's real and you can tell when it's uh, when it's not real and and that's again where that authenticity comes from where you're doing something not so you can get something back but you're doing something because it's the right thing to do yeah you know? and i think that that's just and i think in some way if it, even if it's not immediate karma can work in a positive way where you, where you will get something back as well just by continually putting yourself in the right places and continually doing the right things like you'll be rewarded for that and i think in my mind bud the the person that has that it factor 
quite honestly doesn't give a shit about that. And what I mean by that is, is that they're not doing it hoping that maybe, and I know I don't yeah. think that's what you're saying. Yeah. Hoping that karma is going to come back and it's you a know, byproduct, give a nice car, the, give a nice car. Not the or a, yeah. It just it's if it happens, you know, whatever. And I think they would just chalk it up to it being luck. You know, it's and it's you know it's not important to them. They're just what's important is is that they're able to connect with somebody. Um, they're able to do good by somebody. They're givers. They're not takers, and and we talked, and we will write a book about this, you yeah. know, the it factor, and and what that person, what their char- characteristics and traits are all about. Yeah, and that's I'm trying to convince him once he retires, or whenever that com- that day comes. I feel like yeah. there, there needs to be a book about the it factor, or being that person, or maybe a combination of the two. I just think it would be amazing to kind of bring that to life and articulate that and yeah. find different ways. And I think a key component of that too is someone who helps awaken the potential in people and it doesn't have to be massive things like as my dad was talking about with with my grandpa dave he just was able to see the bus boy and he would compliment them and say you're working very hard and i want to recognize you for that and i think that's a component of it too is mm. just helping people yeah. awaken that potential and it doesn't need to be this big grandiose thing like becoming a movie star it can be simple things and it's everyday things and you can create you can become that person have that it factor by just continually doing positive things throughout yeah. the day and throughout just creating those experiences for people that again you expect nothing in return but you just want the best for other people as well I think how powerful it is you know like um, in terms of self-belief and so many of us you know and I'll be honest like uh, not many days where I'm not doubting myself about something but to have somebody who you do know or maybe um, you don't even know is maybe even a little bit more powerful you barely know that shows belief in you and and what you're doing and what you're all about and then it's unsolicited you know it's not like you expect it you know it's just it comes to you unsolicited it 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 just fills up that tank it's powerful it just fills up your tank you know and and i think the world needs those there's so many things so many um people who and I love the analogy from Adam Durgis, who's another. I was another, gonna talk about that. Another yeah. person. Where am I? I don't want to take your thunder, but I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. So Durge. Um, Please, it's your episode. So Durge during a, during a golf trip, uh, talked to us about filling your cup, and that's something we've talked to our team here about. Is when you go through life, um, you know, as adults or as children, you have responsibilities, and you've got this cup, and this cup is filled with energy, your life, your your being, and. You know when you've got a prof that you've you know, you got papers for they take your cup and they're drinking from your cup and then if you've got kids and you've got kids that are you know you're taking to a variety of different things and they're drinking from your cup and eventually your cup gets empty and um, and what we need as human beings is we need something or someone to help fill that cup uh, so that's taking a break um, coming again out to Kananaskis and that's one of the things we talk about is that this is a place to help fill your cup uh, where you know you just get a chance to be with people and look at the last couple of years golf became so popular because it had you had an opportunity to, to be normal and hang out yeah with people. we all miss Hum- that human connection right yeah, yeah exactly and and so that's that's what I think you know we're all looking for is and what we all miss to some degree you know whether it was golf or whatever else was what is it that you do um, that helps to fill your cup and that person that has that it factor is you know is that person you know and, but that person you know as they're giving away their energy that's coming out of their cup so they need something to help fill their cup and that's a cyclical thing and, and yeah but uh, I don't necessarily know if I agree that you giving people your positive energy is taking out of your cup I think it actually can true. work to fill your own cup that's as a, well yeah good point and the student becomes the teacher <laughs> <laughs> it was so true yeah. yeah that's very true yeah sure. so I've been the one asking the questions what's one question you wish I asked you and how would you how would you answer that uh, how many strokes are you gonna give me playing oh golf God. in about 15 minutes is that a qu- well, that feels like a good place to wrap up the episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> as you all know, or unless it's your first episode, thank you for being here. We have a paperclip here, paperclip jar, and we just want to fill this up. Every single paperclip represents an episode, so do the honors, my friend. Thank you, sir. Blop. Thank you for being just here. Just like every free throw, the Central Alberta Free Throw Championship, 1986, right in the middle. Nothing but net. <laughs>
<laughs> Happy Father's Day, everyone. Thank you for being here. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Take care. Peace. <laughs>